In today's video, I'm going to go through every single major sign I am seeing as a Toronto realtor on the ground, according to the numbers representing buyers and sellers that buyer competition has returned to the Toronto and GTA real estate market. We're going to make it official in today's video and go through all the signs. We're going to go through what I'm seeing on the ground, if the numbers back it up, how buyers should approach the market and how sellers should approach the market. Because guess what? By the end of the video, I think I'll have you convinced that buyers competition has returned. Before we get into that though, hello everyone. This is Sam from Siberia 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Real to Inc. If you're new to the channel, welcome. On this channel, I like to discuss everything having to do with the Toronto and GTA real estate market, market stats, market facts, buyer advice, seller advice, area analysis, condo review videos, even Toronto real estate vlogs. So if you find any of this content informative or enjoyable, feel free to subscribe. Furthermore, you can find my contact information in the description box and the link to my exclusive WhatsApp group chat where I send interesting market reports, whether from other resources or market reports I have created myself. Enough of that, let's get to the point of today's video, which are key signs, seven key signs I'll be going through that buyer competition has indeed returned to the Toronto and GTA real estate market. Starting with the first and biggest sign, which is the return of the bidding war. Now I discussed this in way more detail in one of my most recent videos, uh, but that video is a tiny bit outdated because it was a couple of weeks back, but a lot of the points I made in that video still stands. If you're not aware of what bidding wars are, it is the strategy of intentionally underpricing a property to induce multiple offers. Now, this is a strategy that sellers love to use, agents love to use, I use it when the time is right for my seller clients in moderate to hot markets. Obviously it does not operate well, it does not yield good results and we've seen historically that it fails in moderate to cool markets. Occasionally it does work well in moderate markets but as the market starts inching and inching and inching towards more of a seller friendly market, well guess what, this strategy works more and more. And in this case, I am seeing on the ground, whether I'm working with my Toronto condo buyers in North York and downtown, working with my freehold buyers in the York region area, also having an eye on the market for my seller clients, I'm seeing more and more properties list for bidding and offer night and more properties sell successfully. This is even comparing to two weeks ago. Now, there is a distinction to be made, right? As I, as I mentioned in one of my other recent videos, the bidding strategy is not working as well for condos, particularly downtown condos. It is working pretty well for North York condos, a little bit, you know, obviously north of York Mills to Steeles. It's working fantastic for good units in that area for condos. Downtown, it's still a hit or miss. For York region detached freehold or semi-detached freehold or even townhome freehold, it's working stellar. It's really, really working well. A lot of properties are indeed selling with five plus offers. Obviously the over asking thing is a given because the pricing of the property was underpriced intentionally in the first place. So I won't even mention that, but on offer night, there's a lot of offers coming in. Now in terms of price, and you'll see in this video, that's something I will not mention because we don't have the month in full yet. February has not ended. At the time of recording of this video, this is February 22nd, and I'm not gonna talk about about price when we don't have the entire month done in full. But as of January, it was the case that bidding wars were not leading to higher and higher prices. In February, maybe that has shifted, but we have to look back at the month that was once the month is done. This helps me transition to the second major sign that buyer competition has returned. And to me, I think this is one of the biggest signs. And this is what I always look for, whether I'm representing a seller or I'm working with buyers to see how competitive the marketplace is for buyers, which is the return of firm offers. That's correct. More offers now are firm than they were even once again a couple of weeks ago, definitely January and for sure, definitely the buyer friendly market we saw in fall of 2023. And for long time viewers of this channel, you guys know how consistent I've been with this. Ever since September, I started calling it a buyer friendly market in 2023, upwards of December, and we went through all the facts at that time where I said, hey, buyers should probably get involved in the market now as opposed to waiting for spring of 2024. And all this is on record, by the way. I you know, gave that advice in my WhatsApp group chat. If you're part of that group chat, you know back then I said the market is much more buyer friendly than it will be in spring of 2024. Now we're seeing those results I was talking about. Right now, a lot of buyers, especially for freehold, are submitting offers that are completely firm. So no inspection 
inspection condition, no financing condition, no uh, for condos uh, status review condition. And you might ask, well, why is this a sign of a competitive market for buyers? Well, guess what? In a buyer friendly market where you don't have much competition, you as a buyer have way more leverage to negotiate for these protections. Even if you don't need them, you can still have them just in case. But when it's a buyer competitive market, when you are part of 12 other buyers who are interested in the same property, at the end of the day, guess what? Buyers will end up removing these protections in order to make their offer stand out. And I speak from the seller side as well. When I'm representing a seller and they're listing, we have two offers on the table. One offer is maybe offering a million dollars with the inspection condition. The other offer is offering, let's say $990,000, so $10,000 less, but without an inspection condition. I often recommend my sellers to go towards the lower priced offer that's within range, obviously, but that's a firm offer. Because you have to understand it's a zero sum game. Whatever is a protection for you as a buyer is a hindrance to the seller, especially in a seller friendly market. And obviously speaking of offers, the third biggest sign is that offers are up in general. Because that's right, when we take a look at February so far, to be fair, February 1st to February 20th, across the Toronto and GTA real estate market for all property types, we see that offers are up 83% month over month and to the tune of I think around 28 to 29% year over year. This 83% increase in offers is substantial to say the least. That this is the clearest indication that people are interested, people are placing offers, people are actually going for it. And this obviously also indicates that more buyers are actively involved in the market in a serious fashion. And this helps me transition into the fourth major sign that buyer competition has returned to the Toronto and GTA real estate market, which is also showing in the same geographic uh, designation, the GTA wide for all property types, showings are up 36% month over month and 22% year over year. So not to the extent of offers, but this has to do with the fact that showings were pretty healthy anyways, right? In January, December, nonetheless, a 30% increase month over month still indicates to me clearly that more buyers are actively looking as well in conjunction with the fact that we just discussed that they're also placing more offers. So it's just not window shopping. It's also serious buyers with serious motivations to purchase. The fifth major sign is the fact that pre-approvals are up. Guess what? I'm in communications with more mortgage brokers on a daily basis. I have a lot of mortgage brokers reach out to me. I have a lot of mortgage brokers who I work with. Oftentimes, if you want to see if the market has picked up from the demand side of things, those are the people to be in communications with because they're the kind of the first step in terms of buyers getting actively involved in the market, whether it's a formal pre-approval or it's a more informal, just you know, quick coffee chat pre-approval. Guess what? Pre-approvals are up across the board. Now, I don't have any particular numbers with regards to this qualitative side of things, but guess what? I have my finger on the pulse. I'm always talking to professionals in the industry, you know, lawyers, inspectors, mortgage brokers, and they are always really good indicators of what's coming and what has actually happened. And what I'm hearing from my mortgage professionals, the ones I work with once again, the ones I have an open line of communication with, that they're seeing way more people come through the door with pre-approval inquiries. And this also does lead credence to one of my earlier signs that the market is up, which is the, you know, the ubiquitous nature of firm sales with no inspections, because guess what? When buyers get a pre-approval, right now they're having more confidence to, to go firm on their offers with regards to particularly the financing condition, right? But since pre-approval inquiries are up, that does also contribute to the earlier sign of firm offers being up because part of having a firm offer is also removing the financing condition. Something, unfortunately, once again, buyers have to do right now, especially with regards to freehold, right? There is still some oxygen for buyers to play hardball or not even play hardball, but, but for them to negotiate for a fair deal with a lot of protections in terms of financing and inspection. But we just talked about what I'm seeing from mortgage professionals. The next big sign that buyer competition is up, and you know this might sound a little bit arrogant, but it's just the number of people I have coming to me. Look, I'm lucky enough to have a decent platform on YouTube and other social media platforms. I get messages, I get emails, I get DMs every day. And just in the last two weeks, the number of inquiries I have gotten from buyers who are interested in starting the process also does say something to me as well. Now, once again, this is not an exact science. It's not the best way to determine where the market's going, right? My business could be going up while the market's going down. In fact, if this was the only thing I was seeing, I would not even use it as a sign that the market has picked up. But in conjunction with 
all the other reasons we've just discussed and the next reason we're going to discuss, it shows me that if mortgage brokers are getting more inquiries, I'm getting more inquiries. Showings are up. Offers are up. Sold firms are up. Well, well, guess what? It's just one ingredient, but in combination with everything else, it just shows me that, yeah, it is another indicator that buyer competition has picked up. If I'm getting more inquiries, agents bigger than me are getting more inquiries. Agents even smaller than me are getting more inquiries. So it shows me that buyers are once again actively looking to get involved in the market and have been getting involved with the market. Thus, as a result, buyer competition is up and heading even further up. And the last sign, the last time we're gonna talk about is days on market. Days on market has substantially decreased for freehold properties and you know, particularly detached properties, once again, in Toronto and York region. Durham and Peel have their hot areas, have their cold areas, but particularly for freehold properties in Toronto and York region, Region, days on market has really uh, fell. Now for condos, once again, days on market has also dropped, but to a more moderate extent, right? For instance, the other day I was looking for a client. We were, I was looking at days on market in the North York area. And I think it fell from like 50, which is pretty high for, for condos even. Um, you know, you weren't really seeing that when interest rates were low. It fell from 50 to like 42, I believe. So it's a moderate drop, but it's still a drop nonetheless. Now, before we get into how buyers should navigate this market, how sellers should navigate this market, let's just review everything we just discussed. Mortgage pre-approvals are up. Showings are up. Agents are getting more buyer inquiries. Offers are up. Bidding war strategy is up, sold firms are up, and days on market are down. This all indicates to me that buyer competition has returned and we have seen an increase on the demand side of things. Now, how should sellers and buyers approach the market? One huge disclaimer, if you've worked with me in the past, you know that I always sit down with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to you know, tailor my advice to your particular criteria. So this is just general advice, but on a general basis, I must say that sellers right now have more reason to go on the market as opposed to January, 2024, and for sure fall 2023. If you recall, once again, if you're part of my WhatsApp newsletter, if you've talked to me, or if you've watched my previous videos, I kept on hammering the point home back in fall of 2023, even late summer 2023. Do not go on market right now unless you have to or unless you fit these exceptions. Wait until spring, wait until spring. Just the reverse of what I was telling buyers. I was telling buyers it's a good time to buy. I was telling sellers it's not a good time to sell. Now I am confidently on the other side of the spectrum. Sellers right now have a lot more reasons to consider to go on market. Once again, it's very area dependent. Once we sit down and talk about everything, we're gonna look at your street, your building your couple of blocks but on a general basis i can tell you you can sell your property for much more than you could have if you decide to go on market in fall of 2023 in terms of how buyers should approach the market well guess what buyers right now if you can afford to wait potentially until the summer months when the spring frenzy is over you should probably wait once again condo buyers i think it's better to get active right now you still have some room to negotiate and some particular freehold buyers right you know at the end of the day it's not always about timing the market it's about when you're ready in your life right so if something comes your way that you really like you really want to see it's the street you love or it's a neighborhood you love or it's the type of property you love sure we can go see it but on a general basis the market is heading towards a point but right now is not the best time to be a buyer it's just heading more and more towards a seller friendly position and the more the market's towards a seller friendly position it's less buyer friendly. Anyways, let me know if you guys have any further questions. As always, my contact information is in the description box. Thank you very much so for watching. Stay safe and stay tuned. Thank you.